Brian, yesterday you delivered news that nobody wanted to hear Luis Severino would need Tommy John surgery. What was your initial reaction when you received the diagnosis? Well, I mean, obviously after uh, two failed, you know, rehab attempts as a winner, um, I knew when he went back for a third uh, evaluation in New York and another repeat of an MRI, this time a die contrast MRI, being a part of the equation, I knew, I just felt that the surgery was in the picture. I just didn't know what kind. Was it a stress reaction? Was it a you know a little bone spur that you know they thought was an incidental finding, wasn't playing a part, or you know the ligament appeared to be fine, but the die contrast would confirm or, or deny that. So in the end, it turned out to be unfortunately a Tommy John surgery. Was there any consideration along the way of giving him that die contrast MRI sooner? Uh, you know, I I think the the consideration wouldn't have been on round one in December. I think it's a fair uh, discussion whether you would have repeated that, uh, used, utilized that uh, platform in January. I'm not sure if it changes the time frame, to be honest, when it's all said and done. Even if you did a die contrast MRI in the beginning, say December, um, they would have then, the first reaction would have been treating it conservatively and buying time, backing off. Um, and seeing how he responds uh, because it's a partial tear. It's not like a full thickness tear of the UCL. So even though it was found on the back end versus the front end, I still think that conservative gap in between a surgery would always have been in play. So I don't think it changes the time frame, unfortunately, either way. This was a guy that you expected to play a major role in your rotation. You said yesterday that help is going to have to come from within. Who exactly do you expect to step up in that rotation? Well, I mean, uh, uh, we have a number of, you know, real quality arms, interesting young, uh, talented pitchers in camp that are you know, obviously starting to find their way to the major leagues. And I know when we unfortunately had to go through this process last year, you know, we lost Luis Severino and there was Domingo Herman that popped up and, and what he won 17, 18 games for us last year and pitched like a Severino. And, and that's hard to ask or continue to re-ask for that type of, uh, you know, uh, gap filling um, but you know there's a lot of people that want to make a name for themselves are going to get an opportunity you know uh, it's way too early in camp to kind of spec speculate but clearly you know we got Jordan Montgomery coming back from his Tommy John uh, he looks good early in camp and then you got the kids you got Michael King you got people we already know Sessa Luizaga uh, people that people don't know already as much on as Debbie Garcia amongst others so who and what remains to be seen. We've got a long way to go. Do you expect the fifth starter to start this season to be a traditional fifth starter or is an opener more of an option because of the off days and because of the situation that this team is in right now? Um, I'd say all things are going to be on the table as we evaluate. The one thing that's probably less realistic is uh, uh, trying to figure out if we can navigate a marketplace that doesn't really exist outside uh, the current franchise. That's why I say it's easier to rely on the depth in the first and foremost. So, um, you know, available pitching is so difficult early uh, to, to kind of secure. So, you know, we we'll probably have to navigate this on our own through through the June draft, which is usually the way it plays out. But uh, we'll see. We'll stay connected uh, with everybody and, you know, Hopefully we have some good candidates to pick from here in this camp. You haven't seen a lot of him in game action, but Jordan Montgomery has said that he has felt good. He has felt strong. What stood out to you about the way he has thrown the ball so far this spring? I mean, he's got conviction. He's got confidence. He's in great shape. Uh, and But I say all that, it's so early. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's so early. And, and so we already know what he's capable of because, you know, a healthy Jordan Montgomery on his rookie campaign was fantastic and, and someone that would give us a chance to win every fifth day. So him coming back now uh, and looking healthy and, and feeling confident, that's the projection that you see early in camp and that's an exciting thing for us. So hopefully uh, he can maintain that and, and if he is what he used to be, then you know, we're in a good place with him. So, Another guy that's a little bit nicked up, Aaron Judge had some soreness in his shoulder. He's been swinging off a tee, throwing at 120 feet. Any doubt in your mind that he's going to be ready for opening day? No, I mean, all, all indicators are, are really good. I just think that we're, you know, the one thing that, uh, about taking advantage of spring training is that you know, you're going to have various things come up, and so we don't want to respond to, you know, pressure you know or outside pressures of you know hey can I get this guy playing just because you know our games don't start obviously until uh, you know the end of March this year and so you know the ones that count so we just want to take the time if necessary you know to give Judgey a chance to let this you know uh, shoulder ailment get behind him before uh, you know we just don't want to keep pushing it early and then wind up 
costing us late. So let's give them the downtime, slowly bring them back into it, and then turn them loose. And so it sounds like everything's going really well. His responses to all of it's been going really well. And, and so we just want to make sure that we don't place something in, uh, nothing into something, so to speak. So, uh, but he's jumping at the bit. He wants to play. So he's had to help. He's had, we've had to hold him back because I know he's been frustrated by our timeline that we've imposed. I was going to ask you, how difficult is it to tell a guy like that, no, we do not want you out there right now. We want to take this slow to make sure that you're healthy for, for the whole season. I'm not the one having to have that conversation, <laughs> but I, I can report that those conversations do have, and, and especially early on, you know, it's not something he wanted to be dealing with in terms of being held back, you know. Uh, yeah, and you want, you want to create an environment where the players know you got something, say something, really, so we can react to it. And but there's always that fine line where players don't want to say anything because they don't want to be taken out of action either. And so, uh, but hopefully, I think we have a nice harmony going there with all our new personnel, and and he knows he's in good hands, and uh, and we can just get this thing taken care of in the early stages. There's another guy on the mend in James Paxton. Anything new to report there? How's he coming along? Good. I mean, his. Uh, you know, I get a chance to see him. Unfortunately, you know, uh, uh, more so because he's off the field right now and doing his rehab. And he's he. Uh all the verbal is good. He's going in the right direction. He's responding and hitting all the targets he's supposed to be hitting in his physical therapy. Um, so the early outset uh, is that you know, the surgery hopefully will have taken care of this issue and you know, he'll be back to pitching sooner than later. Miguel Andujar is seeing his first action in left field. Had a few opportunities, small sample size right now, obviously. But what are you going to need to see from him to feel confident putting him on this roster? Well, you know, obviously, first and foremost, his calling card's that bat. You know, he's already uh, knocked a home run his first game, and again, you're not judging anything early, but so it's, it's nice to see him out of the gate that, you know, the Miggy with the, 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 the ability with that bat is still there to put the ball in play uh, with a hard hard exit velocity and, and in the air. So, uh, but more importantly, the athleticism on the field. I've seen him play uh, third base already in game action, and, and, and you know, that's been nice and, and, and looks good. The feedback from Reggie Willits, especially on how he's looked in pre game work in the outfield has been very surprisingly good to Reggie and that he has full confidence that you know you have a a outfield choice here in his opinion we just have to see it play in the game but what he's seen in his uh, early work would indicate that this is not going to be a difficult transition for him so um, that's what you play the rest of the games for and and uh, so you know he'll get an opportunity to show his wares and and not just there it's first base too mm -hmm. you know so he's got a lot of uh, uh, new experiences coming his way and, and some of the cutoffs and relays and where he's supposed to be positioned and you know that comes with that type of territory but uh, you know I've been around long enough to know that if you have a quality bat it reminds me of when Soriano uh, was with us back in the day he was a shortstop coming up in the minor leagues he had a great bat and next you know he, you know, he filled in for Jeter and short for a hamstring in spring training for about 10 to 10 games or so then we moved him out to the outfield uh, and with Knobloch's throwing stuff going on, then we wound up moving to the second base. We were going to find the bottom line. We are going to find a spot for Soriano in that bat. And Andahar reminds me of that. Uh, it might not be now. Maybe it's later, but he's in the competition. But he does have options. So, But the versatility is going to serve as well, as, as we all saw last year, is always important with injuries that come. Well, you're definitely going to give us that 26-man roster as soon as you know it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to figure out this thing over the course of time. But we definitely have some candidates that we're excited about we think could take a shot at it and and you know uh and easily handle that position for us but at the same time it's going to be resolving a revolving door uh regardless based on pressure points in season of how certain aspects infield or outfield or catching you know seem to be playing out with injuries so uh that aren't dl injuries but or il injuries uh, but we might have to protect a certain area of the roster, and that could affect who that 26-man is at certain times. Brian, as always, thank you for the time. Thanks for having me.